wasn't too long ago that if you want an electric vehicle, what you'd end up with is something like a golf cart. But today there's over 10 different choices available that range in size, price point, as well as power. EVs have really grown up. They're real cars that real people can use every day. We wanted to get as many of them together to see what they're like to drive in the real world. This comparison test involves the vehicles that are on the market today and a few that will be soon. We've got the Tesla Model S representing the high-end luxury end of the spectrum. And then there's the Toyota RAV4, there's the Coda, the Honda Fit EV, the Ford Focus battery electric vehicle, a VW Golf prototype, which will come out in a year or so, BMW Active E, a 2011 Nissan Leaf, which is going to be replaced by a 2013 version soon, and the Mitsubishi i9. So besides our usual gamut of instrumented testing, like performance, braking, and handling, our director of vehicle testing, Dan Edmonds, came up with a driving loop that would test how long these electric vehicles could go in the real world. Our course at 105.5 miles isn't a pass-fail test. We don't expect or demand that cars make it around this loop. It's nice if they do. What we really expect to happen is they'll run out at some point. I got a very low battery charge warning. The miles to go entry went from three to just a flashing line. And so I'm gonna pull around this corner and stop. And at that point, uh, we'll haul them back to our charge point at our Santa Monica offices and recharge the vehicle on a metered station so we can see exactly how much electricity they used in the loop. In this test, we had one driver drive each vehicle around the loop starting at 8 a.m. on a weekday, so the traffic patterns would be the same. The average speed's about 29 and a half miles an hour, so we're talking three and a half hours. So you get through a lot of podcasts, you look at all the other cars on the road, and basically you just get through it. There were a few surprising results in this test. For one, the Coda. Who'd have thought that would make it around the loop? It's not a great car, but it has a great battery. And I guess that's what it takes to get miles. The other extreme was the Tesla Model S, which is just a fantastic machine that on our track accelerates from zero to 60 in the four second range. Driven prudently, it goes around twice and has 56 miles left over to get back to the office without having to be towed. The Honda Fit EV feels very much like a regular Fit. Um, except that it's electric, it's very silent and pretty smooth. The Mitsubishi Maeve is the smallest car in this test, the cheapest car in this test, and it has the least amount of range. But that last point is kind of important. 62 miles isn't really enough unless you live in the city and close to work. The nice thing about the Focus Electric is that it feels like a regular Focus from behind the wheel. All the controls are similar. You still get that great steering and composed ride. Of all the vehicles here, the LEAF, the first electric vehicle that went on sale, feels the oldest. The regenerative braking system, the electric braking that you know, recovers braking energy and puts it back in the battery for later use, it seems to be the least powerful. I think that's why its range was uh, at the bottom, near the bottom of the list. The interesting thing about the RAV4 electric is it's actually based on the old RAV4 that's just been replaced. So although you'll still get the space and the range and the power from it, well, there's always going to have that feeling that you're driving an old car. The German vehicles in this test, the BMW Active E and the VW Golf, stood apart because they were the most like the vehicles on which they're based. Even though the Active E is an electric car, it's still a fun to drive BMW. What we found at the end of this test is their performance mirrors their EPA range ratings on their window stickers. The Tesla goes the farthest, the Mitsubishi covers the least ground. The EPA ratings are conservative, as they probably should be, and it's easy with prudent driving techniques to beat that range by as much as 20, 25 percent. With most of these cars, this is just a first step for each of their company's electrification. 
And in many ways, this is a first step for us too at Edmonds because this lays the groundwork for future electric car testing. I don't think we'll ever truly be done with this test. As more electric vehicles evolve and are introduced, we'll continue to add them. There's a Spark EV, a Fiat 500e, the new LEAF, and other models that are coming out that we haven't heard of yet. Because of our standardized loop, we can bring new cars out at any time and just keep adding more and more data to this list. Make sure to check back to Edmunds.com in the future for all things green in the automotive world.